Nine significant enhancements were recently applied to the WIPDIS application, and we will introduce each in this short video. First, when you log into training, you will see that the top of the page is now orange. In contrast, the production system continues to display blue. This enhancement will help users be more cognizant of which system they are using and help ensure that users don't inadvertently create incidents or analyses in the wrong system. Second, the validation tab has been removed. This will help simplify the steps required to develop a decision document. Third, a new cost tab has been added that consolidates all cost-related information for an incident. Here, incident owners and editors can document the estimated final cost for an incident, select the cost estimation method used, and access the estimator spreadsheet and stratified cost index tools. Prior to this enhancement, cost-related information was located on the Course of Action tab, and the Stratified Cost Index was a menu option on the left. These have all been consolidated on the Cost tab and are no longer available in their previous locations. Fourth, a new slider bar has been added on the Course of Action tab. This tool is intended to be used to describe how an incident will be managed on the continuum from monitor to full suppression. A comment box is provided to document an overarching umbrella statement on the strategy chosen, and from this, subsequent detailed action items can be developed. Fifth, Landfire 2012 has been added as a landscape data source for modeling and querying, but data availability is limited at this time. This latest product from Landfire incorporates disturbances, management activities, and succession through 2012. For additional information about the data source, visit the landfire.gov website. Sixth, a KBDI adjusted dynamic layer has been added for the Southeast Geographic Area. Over time, additional geographic areas may receive a similar layer that applies fuel conversion rule sets based on a given weather variable. Seventh, the situation map now opens in its own window. It can be accessed three ways. First, it can be accessed by clicking the Assess Situation button located above the incident list. Second, it can be accessed by clicking the Situation tab in the Incident Perspective. Or third, it can be accessed by clicking the Situation Map Quick Access link located on the right side of the screen and from any tab in the Incident Perspective. This new feature allows users to view the map while entering content on other tabs instead of having to navigate back and forth in one browser window. Here is another example of the situation map and how it can now be viewed in its own window. Notice in the situation map window that only the map and info subtabs are available above the layer switcher. To access options that used to be located on the menu tab, you can navigate quickly back to the main application and the other open window. Eighth is the addition of incident notes. Incident owners and editors can enter incident notes for an incident any time regardless of whether a decision has been created or is in the review process. These notes are not included in a decision and as a result are not intended to document critical decision making or actions taken on an incident. Ninth, the skip to content feature was created to meet federal requirements for five-way compliance and accessibility and increase overall usability of the application. Screen readers are a form of assistive technology that provides audible explanation of fields and items visible on a screen. Users of these technologies use the tab function to move from section to section on a screen. This new skip to content feature allows the screen reader to skip right to the primary fields of interest on that page. Let's quickly review the enhancements we've talked about. First, the top of the training page is now orange. Second, the validation tab has been removed. Third, a new cost tab consolidates cost information for an incident. Fourth, a new strategy slider bar has been added on the course of action page. Fifth, the 
Landfire 2012 Landscape Data Source has been added as a data source and is available in limited areas. Sixth, a new KBDI adjusted dynamic layer has been added to create an optional drought adjusted landscape for the southeast geographic area. Seventh, the situation map now opens in its own window and can be accessed from the incident list, situation tab, or from the quick access link available from any tab in the incident perspective. Eighth, incident notes have been added for incident owners and editors to use. And last, a new Skip to Content feature has been added for use with screen reader technologies. Additional enhancements will be applied in February 2015, so expect another video at that time. Thanks for watching. This video has been brought to you by the Wildland Fire Management Research Development and Applications Program. If you have questions about the video content, contact your local Geographic Area Editor or see the WIFTIS online help.